truth or deception? How can we know? This is something of a special video message. It will be a bit unlike others on my channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I hope you will. You'll find a variety of videos on my playlist there. And you may just find something intriguing and ultimately, I would hope, life-changing for many of you. But let's dig in to this one. I'm recording this because of a disturbing comment I received a while back from someone apparently, I believe in another country, it's hard to tell on YouTube, just a name, first name. I'm not going to use his real first name, but he probably has a Spanish, perhaps a Latin American heritage, so I'll just call him Miguel. I've corrected some of his English misspellings, but here's what he wrote basically after watching my video, Heaven, the Shocking Truth. Um, a video, by the way, that you can access from the end screen on this particular video I'm recording now. Anyway, Miguel said this, quote, I was a non-believer for 53 years of my life until my near-death experience three years ago. I asked for Jesus and I was taken into his presence. I'm not a religious man, nor will I ever be one. But God is real. Jesus is real. And heaven is real. Heaven is our true home. I personally have no need for the Bible to guide my life because Jesus is now my only teacher. And he's amazing. He loves us all the same, unconditionally, just like our Creator. Love is all that matters. The kingdom of God is within you. Seek it and you will find. Unquote. Man, uh, I highlighted his statement about the Bible that you just saw here on the screen because this statement disturbs me the most. Miguel's world, it would seem, was turned upside down. And his words seem to be very strong words of faith. I don't know what kind of uh, illness or uh, accident perhaps that he had that brought him near death, possibly in a coma. But he seems to have very strong words of faith, doesn't he? Faith and belief. And some of you might be thinking something like, oh, okay, Steve, well, if he had an experience like that, well, then that's his truth, and his truth is his truth, and who am I to challenge it? Well, that sounds pretty good. It sounds fair and everything, and nicely tolerant. But I would have to re reply with uh, this question. What if Miguel's commitment to his experience is deception and not truth? How does our friend Miguel really know that his feelings about how uh, he interpreted this vision or dream or whatever it was during his NDE was actually an appearance of Jesus? Well, I think this kind of belief, or even call it faith, uh, if you wish, is most dangerous. So let me ask you, how do all of us who are Christians, millions of us over the last 2,000 years since Christ's resurrection, even know what God has told us about uh, in terms of the wonder of his creation, of sin, of the fall of man, of the promise of uh, his return to earth, Christ's return, and the story of his redemption of us, what it means to be redeemed of our sin, all of that. Where do we get that information? How do we even know anything about that? How did Miguel know anything? It's obviously from the Bible. It's unknowable except through some kind of written revelation. But then there are lots of competing ancient written documents, right? So why have the Christian believers for hundreds and hundreds of years, why have we been so blessed by reading the truth God inspired in our incredibly wonderful Bible? To me, this is how we know what we must uh, do in terms of our lives, what we make, what sense we can make of our lives here on this very muddled, troubled planet. This is how we know that we are to repent of our sins, that we are doing things, all of us, that are an offense to God, that break His laws. And often our conscience tells us that. But we are... The Bible will tell us, Christ himself warned us, 
to ask God's forgiveness, receiving Him, receiving Christ as Lord and Savior and the redemption that comes through faith in Him and the incredible sacrifice He made for us on the cross. Well, there are just too many stories, uh, if you were to research them, of so many deceived people who have rejected or ignored the inspired Word of God, the Bible, and have instead listened to voices or visions who, uh, that may have seemed to them certainly truth, but they ended up believing things that don't correspond with what Christ told us. Often they were in complete uh, a rejection of what Christ said. And going off in another tangent, one of the things Miguel said, for example, is that everybody all is ultimately all right. Uh, everyone? No. Jesus said there's a wide, broad road that leads to destruction to hell. Uh, and he said, most are on it. That's the scary part to me, the most tragically horrible part. And the narrow road that leads to life, and few find it. Well, anyway, if we're believing something that doesn't correspond to what Jesus actually told his disciples, who faithfully wrote what he told them in the Gospels uh, and the Epistles in the New Testament, uh, then we're going off on a tangent, maybe off and on into a side road that leads to danger. For example, in the wonderful Gospel of John, in the first chapter, we read that Jesus is the living Word. And the written Word is the story of Jesus. His, his Word is truth. Now, before going further, I, I would like to plead with sincere people like Miguel and others with similar impactful personal experiences that the deception many poor people have received over the centuries can very likely be visions or words in their minds uh, of deception from someone Christ called the prince of this world, Satan, the devil. Jesus called him a liar and the father of lies from the beginning. The Bible also warns us that Satan can appear as an angel of light. That's pretty scary. Now I want to tell you a brief story that still chills me a bit as I relate it. Years ago in California, I had been talking to some people in a, in a nearby apartment building about faith. And as I shared with one woman about the Christian faith, she eagerly responded with, Oh yes, I too have my faith. Uh, I have a bright spirit guide who comes to me and tells me of my future and the ways through meditation and service that I can achieve to his high spiritual plane. Well, I'll tell you, that disturbed me greatly. I thought for a moment and I shared with her passages in the Bible about deceiving spirits. And when I quoted that passage I mentioned earlier about how evil spirits may sometimes appear to people as shining apparitions or angels of light, I'll never forget her reaction. She looked as shocked as if, a, I don't know, as I might have suddenly pulled a gun on her. But I, uh, all I had said was in a very respectful but concerned way what I said, what I just related to you. And she obviously was forced to think at that moment more deeply about these visions uh, and what she was being told by the spirit apparition, which she had only a moment ago proudly referenced. And I'll never forget her being so struck uh, with abject fear. I saw it in her face. Her face just changed abruptly on my almost. She was just terrified, is the only other word I can think of it. And I think at that moment, she knew the truth, but didn't want to talk further and abruptly turned away from me, ending what had been, up until that moment, a friendly discussion about spiritual things. Well, what do you think happened in that encounter? Let's go a little bit further with this issue of spiritual reality then. That is the spiritual truth that we are strongly given in the Bible versus spiritual deception. If the Bible really is true, in fact, by the test of history, logic, archaeology, and accurately fulfilled prophecies, and most importantly, the solid evidence of the life and miracles of Jesus of Nazareth, it is true, then I believe it has earned the right to be received by the millions who have believed in his words down the centuries as rock-solid, absolute, God-ordained truth.
So, back to my reason for making this particular video. Remember our friend Miguel? He made what seemed like a firm since slash therefore kind of belief statement that so concerned me. Remember his comment to my earlier uh, video that he watched was in part this statement, quote, my near-death experience three years ago, I, in that I asked for Jesus and I was taken into his presence. I'm not a religious man, nor will I ever be one, but God is real, Jesus is real, and heaven is real. Heaven is our true home. Personally, I have no need for the Bible to guide my life. Well, I'm sorry, but I've got to give you, in response to this, a flying analogy. It's just that I see the statement of McGill, similar to the senior pilot of an airliner on a dangerous landing approach, as he responds to his junior co-pilot's warnings this way. Hey, I know it's a dark and stormy night, no visibility out there, and with dangerous wind shares about, but I'm a pro. I have no need for instruments and radar. I'll land this baby on the runway by sheer seat of the pants, flying skill, and my will. So as sincere and as confident as that pilot might be, how do you like to be a passenger in the cabin holding tight to the armrest of your seat? Well, that's kind of how I see Miguel, and sadly many people like him, like that pilot, who are willing to just hold on to their own experiences, even strong ones, like maybe a near-death experience, and as sincere as they may be, uh, amid, they'll do so amid uh, just clear counter-evidence contained in the Bible's words of warning about such things. I'm going to give you a few of them here. This is how I see Miguel, and sadly many people like him, who are willing to hold on to their own experiences, even strong ones, maybe even sincere ones, like some kind of near-death experience. Holding on to that though amid clear counter-evidence and warnings of such things contained in the Bible. Well, I'm sure most of you will be okay just hearing me for the remainder of this video. But let me challenge those of you who are left to give full attention now. These are things of crucial and eternal importance. I want to look more deeply into the scriptures, God's word, what we'll call a guided flight path leading safely from earth to heaven. So in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 17 actually, Jesus himself requires that we give attention to his teachings and his doctrine, for which there is only one source, the Word of God, the Holy Scriptures. The Bible itself stresses the importance of reading and holding tight to its words. Some verses for reference I'll display now on the screen. Take a minute and consider them. You know, the Bible is so clear in so many places that God is love and the Son of God, Jesus Christ, says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. So I would wonder, how does someone like Miguel know that what those commands even are? What are they? Without a careful reading of the Bible's four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 
These four, millions of us have become convinced, are accurate histories of the events and words of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. By faith, we strongly believe that the Bible is Miguel's and our only source of God's truth. If not, how will someone like Miguel determine error from false teaching? Listen, I realize that many near-death experiences are, are hard to argue against, since the, in the person's mind it, it was all very real, just like a dream may seem real to us. But Miguel's insistence that he will never be a, quote, religious man is really not accurate. Why not? Well, on the very basis that he is telling us that he is. He believes in a Jesus who loves and teaches him directly and promises that he will have a place in heaven. Well, that should, I think, remind us of our Lord's warning about the many false claims of those who profess to be the Christ, and that may be a demonic being of some kind that has given Miguel a distorted picture of who Christ is. What a tragedy. Jesus is the true Savior, the true Messiah, and the way we know about him is in the Word of God, the Bible. Christ said this in his powerful end times teaching on what it will be like in the last days on earth. Listen to his warning. Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. The only way to know this kind of deception is not via feelings, but through the words Jesus Christ revealed. It is interesting that Miguel comes close to quoting the teaching Jesus himself gave us in Luke chapter 17 about the kingdom of God being within, but more accurately in the translation, it's the kingdom of God being in your midst. He was talking about himself in terms of his witness to the people of that time in his era. But if our spiritual enemy, Satan, really exists, then of course Jesus plainly states that he does several times in the Gospels and the demons that he controls. Well, then it seems that Satan could be using Miguel's NDE as a distraction from the truth. Specifically, how does Miguel even know who Jesus is apart from the Bible? He doesn't. Christians down the centuries have discovered the reality of the Son of God who came to earth to rescue human beings from sin and judgment only through the careful reading of the New Testament record. That's the only way we know. Well, sadly, from his words, it almost seems as though Miguel reveals a kind of, a kind of arrogance or indifference toward the Word of God given to us and the Lord's inspiration of the Bible's 66 books. The Bible is what convicts a person, as we know from Psalm 119. The words in the scripture are what God has used to bring us to a knowledge of himself. Miguel may also suffer from the confusion that many others have about the word, quote, religion. Religion can also, often, I think, be man's distortion or even corruption of the truths God has given to us in the inspired biblical record. It's a bit like I don't know, someone taking a stunning 100 carat diamond and all its flashing brilliance and beauty and then dipping it in a vat of black mud, then letting that layer dry and then repeating the process, dipping it again and again until all any observer can see is a big dried mud ball. <laughs> well, that mud ball represents so much of man's covering of God's revealed word, his diamond, if you will, with a coating of mud a coding of rules and requirements and religious codes, etc., etc., etc. Pretty soon you no longer can detect much of the underlying truth, but only what represents, quote, religion. Well, this is a far cry from simple faith and belief and a commitment to Jesus Christ that we read about in the Bible. He said that is what is necessary to gain eternal life. Well, sadly then, Miguel and others like him are in grave danger of remaining in the dark spiritually, apart from the Word of God. 
If he ever watches this video, I would respectfully challenge this sincere but likely misdirected man to read the Gospel of John first and foremost. He'll find there's so many glittering diamonds where Jesus reveals his true glory and the clear directions people must find in order to receive eternal life. And then follow Christ as he told us in this firmly worded verse. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. You know, there's also a number of times Christ referred to the scriptures in his teaching. In fact, he does this and says that all of these scriptures are truth. In fact, the Bible calls them God-breathed, if you will. Jesus himself requires that we give attention to his teachings and his doctrine. In John chapter 17, he refers to the word of God by one word, truth. There's only one source of that truth. It's the word of God, the Holy Scriptures. Well, it's crucial to remember, too, that there is a warning that comes within a powerful example of an experience someone reported long ago that could sound an awful lot like the most incredible near-death experience you've ever heard of, except it wasn't near this man's death. Instead, he tells us that he was catapulted unexpectedly into a spiritual vision of incredible power, awesomeness, and detail. The man's name? John. And he wrote down what he experienced. This is the same John who wrote the Gospel of John. And he was given this incredible vision near the end of his life as he was in exile on an island called Patmos in the, in the Mediterranean. Well, we're reading about this incredible vision in the Bible's final book, Revelation, that, it, that really mysterious, wonderful, incredible, and yet very scary book. I have several videos on this, and you can access the first one on the end screen of this video. But in this vision, John records Christ's own words of warning to him that people will be deceived by in the end times. Many of the signs around the world, of course, suggest that we could be entering a terrible period even now. So Christ's actual words to John were these. We just can't separate the revealed Word of God, the Bible, from the person of Christ. Jesus categorically reveals himself through his Word. He says in John chapter 5, these are they which testify about me. When Jesus talked to two of his disciples in a post-resurrection appearance, he pointed them to the scriptures. He said, quote, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself. Jesus directed these disciples to the scriptures and the scriptures alone to learn about him. Why did Jesus call these disciples foolish and slow of heart? Well, because they didn't believe the prophets, which meant the Old Testament scriptures they could have read. And then he went on to use those very scriptures to explain to these disciples who he was and what he had come to do. We don't have the privilege of walking down that road with Jesus and talking with him like those guys did. But they needed the written word of God to understand Jesus and how much more do we need it. So based on these verses and certainly others, the true knowledge about Christ is a guided knowledge, one based solidly on the scriptures God has given us. So isn't it unwise to have a concept of Jesus based strictly on one's personal idea or feelings? There's a strong warning about this in the Bible. It says, quote, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it, unquote. Well, back to the Gospel of John again for a second. The very first words of the Gospel writer John, who was one of the closest apostles to Jesus in his three-year ministry, were these.
Jesus is symbolically the Word, the truth, God Himself in human flesh. And the only way we know about what He said about how we should live and how we gain eternal life is only in the New Testament record. The Bible matters because Jesus says it does, and He spoke about it. Regarding supposed supernatural encounter, supernatural encounters with Jesus or any other spiritual being for that matter, consider this, 2 Peter chapter 1. Peter said the scriptures are, quote, a more sure word of testimony, unquote. And the Apostle Peter was a very close eyewitness to the supernatural miracles Christ performed while on earth as he walked and traveled with him and along with the other disciples. And the Apostle Paul, who wrote so many of the New Testament epistles, emphasized in 1 Corinthians the clear facts of the gospel, even after his encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus and later being caught up as he reported to the third heaven in some powerful, brilliant vision where Christ spoke to him, stunning him deeply, he still stressed the written word. The Apostle Paul encountered the risen Christ, and, but he was the one who later wrote, quote, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work.